All right, welcome back to The Necessary Entrepreneur. In this episode, it was awesome for us to have Bobby Mackey. He's a traditional country music singer with a five decade career. He opened Bobby Mackey's Music World in 1978 in good old Wilder, Kentucky, next to the same railroad track he worked in his youth. Bobby Mackey's World could be named the Grand Old Opry of Northern Kentucky, featuring live traditional country music that has featured the likes of George Jones, Johnny Paycheck, Keith Whitley, and the young Dwight Yoakam. It even has a mechanical bull. Bobby Mackey's World has been featured on several paranormal television shows, including Ghost Adventures, which called it one of the 10 most haunted places in America. The information's out there, but we dug into the business side of opening and running a music venue, what's changed and what hasn't over 45 years, and what's still to come. Bobby talks about what he considers country music and how modern country music isn't country, it just stole the name. I had a great time sitting down with him. I hope you enjoy it just as much. If so, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe on whatever platform you're tuning in and watching us. Thanks, and again, I hope you love it as much as we did. So we got bright lights today, and I said we had to bring out the bright lights because we were coming to meet a star. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, so I'm excited to be here today with Bobby Mackey because here's what I know. I think you call yourself a singer. I'm just a plain old country boy. Isn't that great? Yeah. Um, but what I love, too, is, is that I look at this as like a temple of country music. That's what I... Uh had in mind when I came here 45 years ago. So we're sitting in a place that you play on every Friday and Saturday night, but we're sitting in a place, too, where guys like George Jones mm -hmm. have come on here and on this stage in the 1980s and played. And as we were talking about before we came on, you said, man, that's when I knew I arrived. The place was big enough, and that's what I wanted was a place where I could play my country music the way I wanted to. When I come over here to Wilder and looked at this place and knew I had to have it, had the opportunity to book uh, George Jones, and, and, and you know how it would be. It was all about business. So I got to make this work. It was all about business. And that very night when he was introduced to my stage, I froze in my tracks. Froze. And I, wow, this is real. My, my hair stood up. <laughs> and this is George. I'd watched him growing up. And, you know, George was one of my country heroes. My, my first original uh, country hero, my, my first inspiration was Hank Williams Sr. And, uh, and Mom taught me some of his songs. And uh, Mom saw something in me that uh, uh, it was just normal to me, but you know, she taught me to sing before I could even talk, and I don't even remember it. And, that, and that's a fact. And then, then, then she taught me to play guitar later. When's the first time you remember picking up that guitar? Uh, I, got, I got the guitar for Christmas. Uh, my oldest brother got me that guitar. I was eight years old when I got it. I still have it. It's in a glass enclosed case on my wall at home. It's a Roy Rogers guitar. What would it take to get that thing out of there and have Bobby uh, strumming on that one for years? I don't know. Strings would probably pull the neck off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's awesome about this place, too, is it's known for many things. To you, it's kind of your heart and your soul. And it feels like from a you're a singer, but you're a businessman, too. I learned the business after the singing, though. So you created this to let you live your dreams. Yeah, I played other clubs before I come here. I played three different nightclubs in the Tri-County area over a period of eight years. Every time I'd go from one club to another, which was close by, five, ten minutes away, everybody followed me from one club to the other. And uh, so then I thought... It, I come to a crossroads where I was either going to move to Nashville or get my own place. And uh, so I chose to get this club after I saw this. When I saw this, that iced the deal. I was going to stay here because I fell in love with this place. It, it was, it was a, a cowboy place. You know, it was country. Mm -hmm. When we first opened here, I was open. Uh, we were open uh, five nights a week for a little while for six nights. It's, it's been good to me and... and I love the city of Wilder. The city of Wilder's been really good to me, and I, I watched Wilder grow in leaps and bounds through the years. Mm -hmm. You just got an award the other night, your little plaque. Uh, yes, I did. Forty-five years. 
Yeah, a recognition of 45 years here in Wilder, Kentucky. What that, what's that feel like when you stand up and you can reflect on those 45? What's that feel like? I wouldn't have had it any other way, <laughs> but uh, it, it feels great. And the city of Wilder has my name on the city limit sign, too. That's what it takes, huh? Proud, you gotta be a proud home of Bobby Mackey's on the city limit sign. That's awesome. Yeah. So you drive by signs. So if you ever, if everybody tells you you're not good enough, you're like, you know what? Let me get in my car and we're gonna go for a ride. <laughs> I'm gonna see what names your names on, what signs your name on, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, it, it feels good, and uh, and uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna just keep playing country music. So when you said that uh, your hair stood up at George Jones, yeah. So supposedly there's something about some ghosts around here. We're not going to talk about it too much because we don't want to come out. But they, yeah. some people come for the ghosts, but they stay for the music. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't mind talking about it. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily believe in it, never have. But uh, I've softened through the years because so many people do believe in it. And they come here from everywhere to spend the night, to investigate. I've found there are more people who do believe in it than don't. That's for sure. But I didn't want it to get out. I started hearing rumors of it from a boy that uh, that went to work for us here when it first opened up. He lived right up the street from here, Carl Lawson. We put him to work helping us, you know, doing some painting, cleaning up, and getting ready. Because this place had been closed for a long time mm-hmm. when, when I got it. Carl kept, you know, I had so much on my mind, I, you know, I barely paid attention. He'd kind of mumble. And all of a sudden, I understood what he was trying to say. I said, wait a minute, Carl, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, he said, you wouldn't believe some of the things that go on around here. <laughs> I said, if you're trying to tell me that, that this is some kind of paranormal stuff going on here, I want you to keep it quiet and don't tell nobody because mm-hmm. I don't want nobody to know. I don't want to run everybody off before I get open. <laughs> so that's the way that started, and he didn't say nothing about it. It didn't really get out until 10 years in. I'd been here 10 years when that got out. 1990, right? Uh, or was it, this, or was uh, it the eight, 80s? 88. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not all your thing, but a lot of people believe it. Yeah, and uh, I didn't start it and can't stop it. <laughs> it's cool. So there's some questions around that, and then we'll get off of it because I want to get back to I want to get back to the inspirations about running the business and operating the business and the purpose and the struggle and important people around you. Your late wife Janet and yeah. right, and you've been married again for 12 years, I think. Yeah. Right, and so yeah. the importance of having people around you, but supposedly there's a hole somewhere here that if you open it up. It might go straight to places we don't want to talk about. Well, there's a well down there. Well, there you they go. Call it a well. It's not a hole. It's a well. So does that well? Is it that that also rhymes with hell? Uh, some people have called it Hell's Gate. I don't know if that's a place I need to be going. Well, back in the late 1800s, the site right here was a slaughterhouse, and that well drained the blood from the slaughterhouse. The tunnel went under the railroad track and into the Licking River. Also, back in the forties, a guy, one of the one of the four guys in the mob from Cleveland, Mo Dowitz, he ran this place, didn't he? Is that true that he ran it and operated it and was here? Who who was that? Mo, I think Mo Dowitz. He's one of these big names, and I don't the, I, I, don't know I, if it's I, him or not. Not familiar, but uh, who was? Uh, it was involved in the days. It was gambling. It was the Primrose Buck, or Buck Brady something. was the big kingpin around here. Okay, Buck so, Brady. So this thing has history. Yeah, yeah, it was. Before it became the Latin Quarter, it was the Primrose Country Club. Mm-hmm. Heck of a country club, huh? Yeah, and then it changed to the to the Latin Quarter right about the time I was born. I love the music you play. So before, as we got on here, you, you rolled in. We were setting up, and I had Spotify on, and Bobby Mackey's on Spotify. <laughs> and so I just I just had it play, and um, I'm like, man, you're good. I got, th- I got a lot of music on YouTube, and you know, YouTube is, has taken the place of country radio, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of listening to the radio all day and, and waiting to hear your song, you can listen to anything you want to on YouTube. But yeah. nothing. what's it feel like to listen to your own songs? Uh, it feel it feels great. You know, I used to, I, I used to uh, wonder about that when I was first getting started. I, I'd go to some of the nightclubs where they'd book in some of the country singers. I remember Jack Green being booked in a place called the Seven Oaks over in Taylor Mill. I remember being there and Jack Green was had come in and he was standing around there and his record was playing on the jukebox and I thought, wow, how does he how does he feel when he hears his songs? He walks in here to a nightclub and he's getting ready to play a show and he's hearing his songs on the jukebox. You know, I I thought, how does he feel? Well, you know, I, I 
I've felt that, and, and it feels pretty good. Feels good. Yeah. So do you have a jukebox in here that when you're off stage on your break on a Friday or Saturday night, they can go hit the button and Bobby Mack comes on? Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but we got a DJ playing dance music. That's awesome. We don't have a jukebox. But... Um, who's your favorite country music singer? Uh, Who was your favorite? Merle Haggard. <clears throat> Nobody else. I mean, I've had a lot of favorites, but Merle Haggard tops them all. Hank Williams Sr. was my first inspiration, and then Buck Owens come along, George Jones, and lots of other country music singers along the way. The old Grand Ole Opry stars, they're all gone now, except Willie. Mm. Willie Nelson's still around, but but all those old Ray Price and Marty Robbins and Farron Young, Carl Smith. Well, Johnny Paycheck. Johnny Paycheck, yeah, a little little later. Yeah. But uh he yeah, wild. Paycheck was here. He was? Yeah. That's wild. Had him here when uh when he just got out of <laughs> out of the joint. Hanging know? out, hanging out with some other folks. And and of course, you know, some guys in his band and stuff, they I knew them. They got a hold of me and said, Paycheck w- w- is is out and needs to work. Will you book him? And I said, uh, yeah, we'll try to do that. So I got with uh uh uh, Beaver 96 and a half was, was the radio station that was going up against WUBE at the time. Randy Michaels was in charge of that. And so we set it up for a free concert with Randy Michaels, and it was a Beaver 96 and a half free concert. So I gave up the door and let everybody in free. They gave me the advertising free, and uh, and... It was a big night. And we sold a lot of beer. (laughs) (laughs) That was good. But anyway, the dance floor was full. But the the promotion that Randy Michaels put together, Randy put this promotion together, said paychecks out of jail and ready to wail. (laughs) It hit, didn't it? Paycheck didn't like it very well. He didn't? No. (laughs) I think he wanted to put it behind him. I bet he did, right? The uh, Randy Michaels leases an office space in a building I own right now. Really? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, you know. Randy had me do the the jingle for that station when it went on the air. Yeah. Beaver 96 and a half, and they played it every three minutes. I recorded this jingle about Beaver 96 and a half. Yeah. Between every song, they'd hit the button and play that. <laughs> for a long time, they did that. Why do you think um, – so what was it about Merle? What was it? Why is – in your mind, why is he the best? If I could trade voices with anybody, it'd be Merle Haggard. But uh, he, just, he just got to me. Uh, kind of the way that Hank Sr. did – when I was four years old, but the same thing. It's that feeling. Hank's voice was real. That moan, girl, he didn't put that on. It was real, and it touched everybody. Well, Merle did that to me, you know, later. Can you feel, when you're up here playing on a Friday and Saturday night, can you feel that connection? Oh, yes. Yes, and I, I do a whole lot. I'll say, you know, I feel I feel like doing some Merle Haggard. What's your favorite Merle Haggard song? And they'll yell out songs. And, mm-hmm. They'll just start yelling songs, and, and we'll grab one. Mama Tried or something like that. Yeah. They love it when I do Merle Haggard songs. What makes a great singer? Heart and soul. Is that it? Yeah. What's that mean to you? When you say heart and soul, what's that mean? Well, when you sing a song, you got to sing it like you mean it. Feel it. It, is, it doesn't just, just just flow out. If you're doing that, you're just phoning it in, phoning it in you know. Mm-hmm. And, but I feel the songs. And I, and I only sing songs that have some kind of message that's heartfelt. Yeah. It feels like when I listen to your music, it feels like you're talking to me. Well, there you go. That, that's, what you, that, that's what you hit upon. That's what Hank did to me when I was four years old and what Haggard did in my teens. Yeah. And so I, when I think about these songs and I listen to them like, Johanna, that's a big song for mm-hmm. you. Right? Yeah, I, I wrote that. Um, and then Poor per- Pearl, Poor Girl. It feels, I'm like, is this fiction or is this nonfiction? What's Bobby telling me here? What's he telling well, me? Is he telling me a story or? Well, when the book came along, Hell's Gate, yeah. uh, Douglas Hensley wrote the book. And when that came along and the, and the book came out and the story was going, getting out there. And, uh, and we, were on, uh, we were on some shows like uh, Sally Jesse Raphael and mm-hmm. Geraldo. And you were big time, Bobby. Hard Copy and, and Current Affair and all those. All we, of them. we were on all those. And it, it was it was it was going everywhere. There was the book, and so the, I the, I wrote the song like an, a synopsis for the book about Johanna. There's a story about Johanna being being here and her spirit being here. 
And, uh, and there was another story about Pearl Bryan. But uh, I wrote the Pearl Bryan song. Uh, Ghost Adventures did a story here. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach Began and, and Nick mm -hmm. and Aaron, they, they've been here three or four times. Zach was doing, doing a, a, some kind of a video thing, and he asked me to write a song about Pearl Bryan. And I did. I wrote the song, and you know, it it turned out good for what he wanted. I don't sing the song much. It you know, it doesn't. I don't feel nothing when I sing it. Mm -hmm. It's just a song about a story that took place here years ago. Yeah. So when you're talking to us, what I always feel is interesting is I always wonder with an artist, what's their favorite song to sing? Because it usually isn't our favorite song, right? Yeah. You know, people used to ask me that, and I, you know, I think, wow, I like them all. You know. I, I, but finally one day it, it dawned on me and it hit me. Uh, my favorite song still today, my favorite song is a Merle Haggard song, but Tommy Collins wrote the song, Long Black Limousine. I know that one. Yep. It's a very, it's a song that you wouldn't associate with Merle. Most people haven't heard of it, but it was one of his songs in, that was on one of his first albums in the early days. And I always loved it learned it and been saying it for years and once in a while i do it just for me see is it is it about how it makes you feel or do you like the story i like the story uh and and the emotion in it and the feeling in it yeah so your band it's incredible they have oh, been with yeah. you for a long time yep they prop me up i'm telling you <laughs> they got my back all the time but my bass player ernie vaughn he and i started out together in 1968 uh I was with him when he bought his first bass, and he started learning to play. He he never owned a bass and didn't play bass, but he wanted to play. So he started learning. I'd play flat top guitar and sing, and he'd play bass with me, and that's how he learned. He's been with me all these years. The drummer. I was playing at a place called The Boulevard out near Tri-County. He was 13 years old, and his older sister sang with me in the band. And his mom and dad would bring him out there on Saturday nights from time to time. And he had drums in his head. He wanted to play drums. He was just ate up with it. He'd watched every move my drummer made. And uh, so I didn't know until several years later when he, when he became my drummer, I didn't realize that he had set his sights then. His goal was to play drums for me. Wow. What can, he, we, what can we take from that? He's been here uh, about 31 years. So at 13, he set his sights on to be your drummer. Yep. How long, how old was he then when he became your drummer? Do you know? 30s. So for 17 to 20 years, and it's on his mind, that I'm going to be that drummer for Bobby Mackey. And he stuck with that idea and that dream and that vision. Yeah, he went on the road with, with some bands for a while and stuff. And uh, every time he'd come to town, he'd come over and visit. And, and I think we, I used him a time or two when he was available, when my drummer was off. And... Uh, but I didn't realize until he was after the job, I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. He was sitting in the wings, though, waiting. Yeah. Waiting he, for that chance. And he is a great drummer. That's awesome. So those guys, they have your back and you have your back. There, there's, there's, yeah. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. They know everything I do. And that's important, too, because if I'm in the mood to go back and do an old song that I ain't done in a long time, they know it as well as I do. The guitar player, Kenny Hill, he's been with us five years, but he's a great great picker and uh, and loves what we do before he he was a kind of a blues picker he said only because he couldn't find no place to play country so, but he got with us and uh, but he'd been playing blues for years and nobody associated him as being a, a country guitar player but he's ever been a country guitar player when you guys are up there playing on a random friday night do you have a set or do you just is there non-verbal it's, communication it's, all, it's off my head i'll just turn around and I'll speak it to the drummer, and, and the bass player will read it, and the drummer will kick it over on that side of the stage. Mm -hmm. I had a steel player for 32 years, Chuck Rich. He used to play with Kenny Price, mm -hmm. and he played on the Midwestern Hayride, Chuck Rich. He'd been here 32 years. He retired the last day of April. And, uh, and I hired this boy, uh, Wayne Hobbs, to play steel, and he and I played together back in 1970 before I got with a band that, and started playing nightclubs. And, uh, but we went our separate ways back then. He went to Nashville, and he played with Marty Robbins and mm. played with a lot of the big stars and stuff and, and uh, ended up, when Chuck retired, he was available, so 
he's tickled to death he's playing country music with us because again nobody plays it like we do mm-hmm. and 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 he's been a uh, playing country music on that steel guitar all these years and and we're just tickled to death to have him and he's 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 raised the raised the game he's raised everybody everybody is uh he's pushing you huh yeah everybody you know everybody has has come up a notch or two just uh-huh. It's just glue, you know. You said nobody. That's a heck of a statement. Nobody plays it like us. They don't. Um, there's and, a, and, and I yeah. won't interrupt, but, yeah. but it's proof. When I'm on stage on Saturday night and the, and the people that come here, the, the proof is right there. Through the years, through the years, I've always uh, played for the dance floor, tried to, uh, tried to satisfy, you know, play some love songs and get some, couples out there dancing slow and some some wanted da- the younger people want to dance faster and i try to i always tried to split the music up and i always looked at it that way but it's changed today people sit there and don't they're the, here to listen rather than dance there are dancers but the majority of people sitting out here are here to listen and and you know they they come to hear country music because they you know, they can't hear it nowhere else. They're hungry for country music. They can't hear it anywhere else. Do you like playing to them when we're here to listen? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I I, I speak right at them, like you said. That's it, yeah. <laughs> it's like you you're you're that. talking to us. That's right. Yeah. I do that. Put that big old Budweiser down and talk yeah. to them. <laughs> and I don't think about what time it is or how long it is till break time. Yeah. It don't matter to me. You just play. You get lost in the moment. Like, exactly. Do you get into what we call the zone? I use that term. Man, we were in the zone tonight. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But it's almost like when you come out of it, you didn't even know you were in it. Yeah, but it's a... Feels good. It's adrenaline. It's an adrenaline high. How often does that happen? Often. That's good. Yeah. We talked about earlier, too, when you when you came in, and um, we talked about just the, the feeling and what's happening and the singing the stage. What I love is you created this to live your dream. And I love that from like an entrepreneur perspective, because if you're sitting around waiting for somebody to do it for you, it probably ain't going to happen the way you want it to. That's, that's, you know, that's pretty much the way it is. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do and, and luckily I, everything opened up in that direction. And I guess I was, had presence of mind enough to make the right choices at the right times. Hmm. Some bad choices in there too, I'm sure. Oh well, yeah. But, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, but they didn't last long. <laughs> you just keep on going, right? Yeah, yeah. You've had a couple special ladies, one that passed yeah. and one now that yeah. have really helped you do this. Yeah, my my late wife, the mother of my daughters, uh, was was uh, with me when I opened up, and 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 she ran everything and allowed me to do the music. She took care of the ordering the stock and. And the help, and she took care of everything, and allowed me to to put myself into uh, into the country music. Yeah. And my, my my second wife does the same thing. So I've been blessed twice to have someone that tuned in that, that we 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 do it all together. So a couple more good decisions there. My late wife, we were teenage sweethearts, and uh, and I just my new record. I recorded this record uh, the first time I heard the song. I just now got this record out. I've wanted to record this song for many years. I wanted to record it, loved the song. First time I heard the song, Waylon Jennings wrote and recorded it, and it was released in 1965. And the first time I heard the song, I was I was with my teenage sweetheart. We were together when I heard the song. The song's called Anita, You're Dreaming. And I told her then, if we ever have a little girl, we're going to name her Anita. And we did, and Anita come along two years later, of course. But uh, she's singing with me now. We just had a, a number one uh, duet that we recorded together, and, and we we're going to uh, receive an award in October out in Houston, Texas, at the Country Music uh, Association of Texas. We're going to get a award for the Country Duet of the Year. It's called All I Need Is You, All I and need it's you. on YouTube. All right, YouTube. probably. I bet if I plugged it in right here, it'd probably come it, right up. It was popped pop right out of there. That's awesome. I'm not a guy that likes to focus on regrets. But you had a decision of Nashville or Wilder, Kentucky. Would you do it different again? I'm glad I, I did it this way. One of the things, I guess, that made up my mind to stay here, I thought, well, you know, if I own the place, I can go to Nashville anytime I want to. 
But but I found all through the years, every time I'd zero zero in on Nashville, they'd change their style on me. I never did change mine here. <laughs> what do you say about uh, new country has stole the name? Yeah, well, uh, they they call it country, but it ain't. And and I'm not I'm not bitter toward that. Uh, in fact, it's it's given me uh, outlets for country radio that that independent country radio. I got I got lots of DJ friends that got their own radio show, and there's about 600 stations in the world that that play traditional country music, and uh, and I you know I I know most of them, and they play all my music when I send it to them. It's a connection, and uh, and and they have an independent chart. Uh, the mainstream is not country anymore, and it, 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 I don't want to hear him call it that, but it works for him, and that's okay. I'm not bitter about it, but I did write that song called <laughs> What They Call Country Is Not Country. They Just Stole the Name. They Stole the Name. That's all. When you sing it, that's you talking some smack without yeah. having to talk smack, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Y'all just listen to my song. I'm not going to yeah. be mean. Country music is alive and well and Wilder still today. That's awesome. The way it was is the way it is. We still do it the same way. Come to Wilder to see it. Yeah. What makes us know we're listening to country, your country, traditional well, country? you know, it's not pop. Yeah. It's country. Moaning the blues type thing, you know, but – but it, it has a story. This these uh, this pop music, I can't relate any story in it. But your cheating heart. Mm. What about the lyrics of that? Good. That Hank Williams wrote many years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, if we put a guitar in your hand, you'd 70. just play. You'd play it right now. It'd just be oh, so good. Oh yeah. Yeah, it'd be but, so but good. Hank wrote and sang it over seventy years ago, and it's and it's there's no expiration date on on a good country song. I can still hear it. Like yeah. just you saying that you're cheating. I can hear him singing it. Yeah. I don't hear anybody else singing it. I hear Hank singing it. I sang it in a talent, talent contest when I was four and won a $5 bill first prize. That's a lot of money then. It, it was. I mean, I'm not saying you're old. Yeah. I'm just saying that's no, a lot of money. That's the truth. <laughs> but my mom took me to, to this talent show, and uh, she told my dad that she was going to take me to enter me in this talent show when I was four years old. And she said, Dad, I heard him say, ain't no use to take him. He's too bashful. He won't sing. Well, I said, I'll show you. <laughs> Five dollars. That's all I needed to hear. Well, at the talent contest, Mom carried me to the stage. She carried me up there and set me on the stage. And I sang no music. I just sang. And when I started singing, the place went crazy. They were kicking, stomping, and clapping their hands and whistling. And when I got done singing the song, I, w I was scared to death. And I saw Mom coming to get me. And before she got there, I leaped and grabbed her around the neck about five feet. <laughs> and I was shaking. She, said, she patted me on the back and said, they're, they're doing that because they like you. And, and that was, that's just exactly what I needed to hear. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. And you've been chasing that same feeling every day for the rest of your yeah, life. Absolutely. So in one of your songs, I don't know if it's a title or not, but you say this is the place Toby love. We're oh, talking yeah. about one of those newer guys. Yep. Well, talking about some red solo cups and all types of well, stuff. But it's a country song, though. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Why would Toby yeah. love this place? Because it's got a mechanical bull and big dance floor. And I just thought it fit, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I like the song. I never do sing it much because, you know. But it, but I'm proud of the song. And it's written to the, to the subject, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, just the kind of place Toby would love. Yeah. Well, you know, he had the song, I Love This Bar. Mm -hmm. So I got it. It came from there. This is the bar you love. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's just the kind of place he would love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can imagine you, one of your albums, I think it was 2013, it's about driving down the road in a T-Bird or something, I think, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can imagine you, Bobby, getting in that T-Bird. You probably owned one. Yeah, I got... Uh, you still got I, it? I got an 04 T-Bird, yeah. It, it's on the cover of that, uh, of that uh, album that that song's on. It's behind you up on that sign. Well, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> 2013. I can imagine you driving down 27 towards Alexandria or double A with the top down, that hair blowing in the wind, and you just yeah. like just enjoying life. Well, my wife and I got married on the beach at St. Petersburg, Florida. And she hates the T Bird. She won't drive it. She can't see out of it. Sits so low. Yeah, yeah. the seat sits so low, she can't see out over the hood. But but she hates the car. But uh but I wrote the song. Uh, she's on her way to Florida in the T-Bird. Um, I go, uh, 
Uh, I can't think of it right now. Uh, anyway, it's uh, she loves that Florida sunshine. She loves St. Petersburg. Oh, yeah. She's on her way to Florida in the T-Bird. <laughs> but she don't want to be in the T-Bird, though. No, no. <laughs> it's just a song, but it's a pretty good song. Do you ever get it out? Do you ever get the T-Bird out? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 in the driveway. Okay, so yeah. you drive it enough. Yeah, I, I drive it when when my wife and I are going two separate places. I was going to say. So time. basically, what happens is when you don't want her to go, you just take the T bird. Uh, <laughs> no, it's when she don't want to drive me nowhere, I take the T-bird. <laughs> you take the T bird. <laughs> but it, you know, I, I love the car, and she keeps saying, "Why don't you sell that thing? Why don't you get yourself?" I, mean, I, I, I love this car. Yeah, it's she, the last year they made a T bird. Yeah, when they brought them back. Oh, four. Is it a true story that you were sued over negligence that you let these ghosts operate in here? Yeah, that kind of popped out on me. Uh, that really happened. Not, yeah, yeah. There was a guy that. Uh, Come, he come in here every every weekend, and he always danced by himself. But he always had a cowboy shirt on and cowboy hat and boots, and man, he was ready to go. Well, he come in here one night, and he never did drink. He didn't even drink nothing. He drank water, cokes, but he liked to dance. And once in a while, he danced with somebody, but most time just by himself. You know, he went in the men's room, and uh, he was standing at the sink washing his hands, and he saw in the mirror an image behind him. And it took his breath away, and he blacked out right there on the floor. It, it took his breath. He saw it behind him in the, in the smoky, he described it as, as a smoky substance in, with the face in it. And, and it, was one, it was a face that he picked out that's in that book, Hell's Gate. That was the figure that he saw. What happened to that lawsuit? He come to me and said, I was going to have to do something about this. This place is evil, and I laughed at him, <laughs> and it made him mad. So he filed a lawsuit. But it, it, he said it when he fell on the floor and said it, it uh, messed up his, his Western shirt and his cowboy hat. So he had to sue for a monetary value. So he did. But the judge dismissed it, said, son, you'll have to take it up with a higher power. <laughs> How that? Were you in the courtroom that day? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe that all was happening. Yeah. How do you keep this good spirit about yourself? How do you keep that? I, I I don't know. I always find a way to be happy. There's always a song on my mind. Huh. You're never going to stop writing, are you? No. But when I write something, I have to have a good idea and an idea that I know a lot about. So I pick and choose what I write about. I, I just don't make myself write a song just for the sake of writing a song. Maybe that's why some of the albums over the years, might, maybe that's why when, a, when one of these big artists that we love put out good music where I can't wait for that next album, but sometimes they're not as good. And maybe it's because it was forced. The record label yeah. made them put it out or. Yeah. When somebody has got uh, going to be doing an album, they just lock themselves in a room and just force right. Yeah. When you're writing that song, what comes to you first? Does the, does the music come to you? Together. It does together. Music and melody together. If, if there's a line that, that I want to write about, then I'll have a melody for that line, and the melody for the rest of the song will come from there. It just happens, doesn't it? Yeah. Gosh. Is it as simple as sometimes you sit down on a chair? It, it's never simple, but it's easier for me now than it used to be. I, you know, I, le I learned how to, how to put the puzzle together, you know. Mm -hmm. What made you confident in 1970 that you could do this? Uh Seeing the reaction to people when I sang, I had to see that and feel that in order to give me the fuel and the energy to keep doing it. If you know, if people were turning their heads and not paying no attention, I'd have stayed on the railroad, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, you you went out on a you 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 built and created this. Yeah. All right. Even though they're coming for you, there's an entire business that's wrapped around you on that stage. Well, you know, I had no assurances that I'd be here 45 years later. You know, you you never know. Uh, it has worked, and I've done made the right decisions, and glad I did. And I'm in the right place. Uh, this this old place has got personality and atmosphere and and all that. Uh, but I'm just grateful that it's happened that way. I love the music. I mean, all week long when I'm when I'm not here, I'm always thinking about a song or or mostly. A song will come to mind that I haven't heard in a long time or a song I've liked. I'll look it up and 
type the lyrics out and and start planning to learn it. And lots of times I'll, well, every week I'll try to do, there's always a song I want to, I might get into it and decide, well, I don't think I want to do that song after all, but but that's what happens. I've, I work on music all week. I've been recording some good music. Dennis Hensley and I have, have worked in the studio for many years together. And he had he had his own studio over on Taylor Mill Road, uh, Jordan Recording Studio. Studio. Dennis Hensley and I, he's been producing me for years, and we're right now producing some some of my best records ever. Just gets better over time. It's like it's like wine, right? Yeah, I just come off a song uh, was number one independent record. A song called "Let Me Drink About It," and the guy that wrote that uh, wrote a couple more that he sent me, and I've just recorded both those. They're not ready yet. But uh, we're working on them. I'm going to be in Nashville next week, uh, putting some tracks down to some of these songs. So what happens when we drink about it? Uh, let me drink about it. Yeah. What happens when we do that? In life? Right now, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's about it's about this. Uh, uh, what's that you're saying, darling? There must be static on this phone. Sounds like you said you were sorry and you want to come back home. Let me drink about it. Yeah. If you really mean it, and I'm hearing right, I'll get back to you. When we make up my mind, let me drink about it. Somebody took the control back there, huh? Somebody said, "I know you want to come back, but I'm going to have some part in this decision yeah, here." Yeah, I'm going to make up. I'm, we're going to make up our mind. I'm going to drink about it, and we're going to make up <laughs> my mind. As good of a soul as you have, as nice of a guy, there's an independent streak in here. You've struck on your own and designed this life and created it and made it happen. That's been important to you. You call your own shots. I, you know, I guess I never realized how important that was. It just it just happened that one one day at a time, and I never realized how important each decision was. It, it you know it was an obvious decision to me. In every moment, you're like, "This is what I have to do." Yeah. Where's that come from? Is it you were so committed? You were so focused? I, I don't know. Adrenaline? I don't know. I just knew what the right path was. You're not a guy who settles for no very much. I bet. No. I, I'm a guy who finds a way. See, that there's something special there. Where's that wiring come from? You find a way. You know, I grew up in Lewis County, Kentucky, up Concord. Mm -hmm. and my dad ran a grocery store and had some farms. And, of course, my mom raised me in that grocery store. She worked in the store, and she raised me there. I graduated from high school, and, uh, and Dad had plans for me to go to college. He done made all the plans. And he come to me, and it was getting into, into the fall late summer he said you, you need to start getting ready to get registered into college I, he was going to send me to uh, Moorhead State University Moore, Moorhead Kentucky I was scared to death I remember looking down I wouldn't look up at him I remember looking down I remember like it was yesterday I said I said dad I don't want to go then I looked up and I said I want to play music he didn't say a word he turned around and walked away from me but it affected him he was upset at me for a couple of weeks he wouldn't even talk to me but he didn't try to talk me out of it. What's the first thing you said after those two weeks? Do you remember? I, I don't think he ever mentioned it. It just went away. Hmm. Mom and Dad were always behind me. It took me to talent shows when I was a teen, you know. Uh, attended a lot of shows. Uh, won, won a lot of trophies in talent shows. Hmm. Why do you think he wanted you to go to college, but why well, hurt him for those two weeks? What do you think as a parent or as a dad? What What is that? I, I don't know. My my older brother, two years older than me, he went, and they just assumed I was going to follow suit, I think. You just kind of gave him the finger. like I, <laughs> I said it real carefully. I said, <laughs> Dad, I don't want to go. Yeah. Anyway. That's a tough moment in your life, isn't it? Yeah. 17, 18 years old. Yeah. And you look up and you know it's going to be disappointing to him, but you still felt like, I got to do this. Yeah, I, I knew uh, – I just didn't think college would do me any good. I, you know, I I can't see now where it would have because, you know, I knew what I wanted to do and and I needed to get experience in music rather than a higher education in college. Yeah, I felt that way then, and I still do. You laid it down for your higher education. I still feel that way. What do we do in life with those people that think we're not good? Those people that say I don't like your music. Well, everybody ain't gonna like it, you know. Everybody didn't like Elvis. <laughs> Should we have? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to create some enemies I'm on your I'm sorry. I done, I done ruined it right now. No, Elvis was great. Yeah. But it just wasn't my kind of music. 
Yeah, he was a blues guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, blues and a little rock, rockish. And... I sang one of his songs in a talent contest. Which one was that? Uh, stick Like Glue, Stick Because I'm Stuck on You. You win it? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. You won the contest from it? Yeah, I was on, I sang that on uh, Harris Rosedale School for Talent on Channel 9. I, I think it was the day I was 13 years old. So if you got $5 when you were four years old, how much did you get for winning that one at 13? A heating cushion of some kind. I'll take the five dollars. <laughs> Mom took that. Yeah, she did. She, keep on singing, son. You're doing good, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, it doesn't matter. It's not for everybody, huh? It's not for every. And, and you're not worrying well, about the ones it's not you know, for. They make all kinds, and I, I don't put any of it down. I, you know, it's not my thing. Everybody does what they what they like, and everybody likes different music. But I'm just glad there's a, there's enough people around here that like country music that keep coming here. Mm -hmm. Are you more? Um, are you more laid back now, or is this the guy you were 30 years ago? Uh, you know, I'm laid back, you know, yeah. a lot. What happens to us in life? What, as that, as that, is that maturity? Is it just a lot of the small things just don't matter? What is that? I feel more more sure after all the years. I feel more sure that things are going to work, and I don't have to be thinking about a backup plan all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what happens What happens if, uh, if your voice doesn't feel good on a certain night? What happens? What do you do? Well... <clears throat> I, that very seldom happens. Uh, I went through a period. That I've always, always been strong vocally. Mm -hmm. Never had problems. There'd be some nights if I sang a lot. Uh, in a, in a short period of time, the weekend would during the week maybe the weekend would kind of wear me down a bit. But it, it's always worked for me. Um, I, I haven't had any trouble that way. I, I did go through a period of time a couple of years ago that that I was getting hoarse a lot. Hmm. But uh, but I got through that. It was uh, found out it was acid reflux causing it. Went to the doctor to help you out a little bit. Yeah. Say so change your behavior. Acid too. reflux. That's what it was. Yeah. I haven't had it since. Were you worried then? Yeah, I was concerned about that. You know, I I was getting hoarse. I, it wasn't hurting or anything. I just just naturally get hoarse, and it, it would play out on me before the night was over. So. What'd you do in those songs when it's playing out? What do you do? What do you? I do? just fake it. Go on through it. <laughs> Sing an Elvis song. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> they're going we can't talk bad about elvis and we can't talk bad about the beatles right we got to stay right, away from them right. people and i wouldn't dare do that you know <laughs> i was bopping to the beatles like all my high school buddies were you were i was bopping to the beatles while that was going on but i was also singing Ernest hub songs mm -hmm. what do you think it is about this music obviously spoke to you it's almost like you didn't choose it it chose you exactly hank williams senior taught me that uh, that was my choice. Yeah, that's awesome. What about Junior? What do you think, Hank Williams Junior? Well, yeah. he's he's different, and and he and he set out to be. He didn't want to be like his daddy. They tried to make him when he first started singing. They had him singing all Hank Senior songs, and and he finally just rebelled against it and and went his own way. And and he's had a great career. It's probably tough, isn't it, coming up in the spotlight of a father or a parent that's been that successful? He, yeah, yeah. He he didn't find himself for a long time, but but he's been successful at it, and you know it, it, he's had a lot of great music. A little, yeah. bo little more rowdy than than my kind of music, but yeah. but I respect what he did. All the rowdy friends, right? Yeah, yeah. If you didn't sing country, what would it have been? I couldn't even imagine it. Probably wouldn't have been. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild though, but you still had to make the choices because you worked on the railroad. Yeah, uh, uh, that that got me down here to the area where music was going on, nightclubs and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons, but I but I, I worked on the railroad and and uh, I got laid off on the railroad uh, a few years in. Uh, they cut everything back and a lot of the coal quit running and uh, these coal trains and stuff, and I got laid off. And when I got laid off, that put me into music full time. And I was doing, I was doing okay in music and when they called me back to the railroad, I didn't go. See, what are they thinking? They went and laid you off and lost talent. I'd have been retired by now, I guess. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'd have been retired it, from the railroad. Isn't it wild? I bet when you got laid off, it was stressful. That moment. Worried about money, yeah. worried about paying bills. Yeah. But isn't it crazy? You look back on those times, we think we're going through tough times, and so many of them were just blessings and we're fortunate. Yeah. I started got playing music making $25 a night. Better than five at four. Yeah, it was. It, it got, <laughs> got, Twenty-five got, a night was that more? Was that paying the bills? Close. <laughs> I was doing several nights a week. No, you know, five 
five nights a week. Were you married at the time? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And a baby girl. And you kept going? Yeah. Had the support at home? Sure did, always. So if we got you out here on the dance floor, though, no. and we have, well, I'm just asking now. <laughs> Come on now. I'm just asking. Right, if Merle was up here singing and he came back and he decided to sing, what would that dance look like? Uh, it wouldn't be good, would it? No, I'd, I'd be standing over in the corner. <laughs> Why? <laughs> just watching him and, and taking him in, you know? Yeah. So you'd be one of the people here to hear the music. Yeah. And not dance. Yeah. What would be going through your head if Merle was back up here playing and he came down and we could bring him back? If we talked to Pearl and all and we brought him back, what would you be out here thinking? It would be a good dream. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I listen to him all the time on YouTube and stuff, and he he always blows my mind. He's, so had, he's had so many great songs and written great songs. You know. Did he write most of his? Not as much as I thought he had back in the early days. I thought everything he that he had out, I, th I thought he wrote, but come to find out he didn't. But he wrote a lot of them. He wrote Mama Tried and mm -hmm. Working Man Blues and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Today I Started Loving You Again. How many people are out here that have talent like these people we've talked about that are never found? Is that true? Or is uh, Yeah, yeah, it is. The, uh, I think it all... I think it all goes back to they may have the talent, but they may not have that internal drive. I've seen that. They they really down deep don't want to do it anyway, but they could if they wanted to. Hmm. But they say they want to. I I don't know. I, I don't know if it's implied when they sing that they want to, or I, I don't know if they actually said it or or verbalize it. I don't know, but I think. That's what it is. If they don't continue it, they, they really didn't want to anyway. Yeah. It has to be. A, I think it, you, it drives it. It's your love of music and singing is what drove it for you. Yeah. But you had to have that internal drive because all those nights when you're getting 25 bucks, boy, that's not out here living in luxury. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I always hoped it'd get better. <laughs> <laughs> what well, <it> did? <laughs> yeah. Right? It yeah. did. Yeah. Is it special with this place that we're in? Is it special that it's still the same same way that it was? Yeah, it feels the same. We we I never wanted to change much. You see those old pictures on? Well, there's one behind that, but you can't see it. See that flamingo picture on there? Yeah, yeah. Th those were here during the gambling days, and I would never let anybody take them down. Did they try? Uh, yeah, they. You know, they. Well, that got covered up. I need to jerk that. Yeah, cover off. Yeah, of come on so now, you, so you can see it. It was one just like that over there. So it's special that it stayed the same. Yeah, there's there's just part of the history here, the capital of country music. Yeah, uh, I don't think many people know that. We better tell them. Well, they see it when they come in here, but actually, I I like America's honky tonk better. Why do you like that better? Because this is a honky tonk, and what's that mean? So when you say honky tonk. Tell me what's what's a honky tonk? What is uh, it? Because you know, I know it's just to you, but it's like tell me what that is. You know, great country music and people dancing and having a good time. I can come here and feel this and think it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. for some people, it's not for them. And then we can hear a. It's fascinating to me. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't imagine that. You know, we have a lot of young people come in here, and and you know they wait till I take a break and the and the DJ plays some dance music for them. But they, but they like our country music, mm -hmm. and and they wait because they know when I take a break, there's going to be some dancing. They'll be able to dance to it, but 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 subliminally, they're learning country music from me at the same time. What gave you the gumption to book a George Jones in 1980? What made you believe that you could pull that off? Well, <clears throat> it it just fell in my lap, really. Uh, George had been in the hospital down in Florence, Alabama, uh, getting sobered up. And he came out of the hospital and only weighed about 100 pounds. And uh, kind of like the paycheck thing, some some guys in, in the band called me and said, George needs to work. He's just out of the hospital down here, and he really needs to work. Can you book him? I booked him within 10 day notice, 10 days notice. That was a big number, though, that you had to guarantee back then. Uh, yeah, it was. But uh, you know, I I knew 
I, I was playing the same kind of music here, and and, and everybody was coming here. Look, I know love George Jones, mm -hmm. so it was it's kind of a natural, but still, you know, it, the business part of it, you have to look at that. But you know, it's one of those things. I made the right choice, and it it worked. Why did you get the call in those times when they called you for George and Johnny Page? Why were you the guy they called? Well, I think they they needed some place to work quick, and they didn't didn't really know a lot of nightclubs that would do that. But I had some friends that uh, the Adams Boys, they're from up in Hillsboro, Ohio. Mm -hmm. They played uh, in George's band, and I knew them. And they called and set it up, and and uh, my my daughter Anita, she was about. 11 years old, and she knocked on the bedroom door one morning, beating on the, Daddy, Daddy, George Jones is on the phone. I said, get away. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> We're playing games. And, well, you know, it was. It, it was. It was a connection, and and it helped him out. When they come in here, the the road manager, first thing he told all of us, told everybody here that don't serve George no drinks. The road manager said, if he needs anything to drink, I'll get it. Don't get George no drinks. If I want him to have a drink, I'll get it for him. And I, evidently, he was allowed some, but uh, that was just before he stopped loving her today come out. Mm. And then it went big. Yeah, that, it, it, it put George over the top for, for forever. You know? For everything you know about the music business and country, it seems like all it takes is one song. And then everybody sees them. And it's like, wow, that's the one that happens. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And the people recording it in the studios and stuff, when, many hits, when they recorded it, had no clue it was going to be that big. George didn't even like that song. He didn't like it. He stopped loving it. He didn't like it. He, he thought it was morbid and, and didn't like it. Became his biggest record of all time. And then he had to sing it all the time. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if that what maybe makes it feel like a job sometimes. I guess if everybody wants to hear the song all the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I I pick and choose my own pretty much. There are certain songs that people want to hear, and and they'll they'll lean on them, and that's fine. I appreciate that. But for most part, I pick and choose my own song, mm -hmm. or the band will yell out a song. They do this, or do that. You know. Do you ever look back at him like, don't you tell me what I'm going to sing? I'll say, well, it's a little early. Let's wait a while and do that, do that song later. <laughs> do you tell him that sometimes? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> if I don't feel like it's going to fit right at that moment. Yeah. So you have a feel now. Yeah. So you're so much more confident up there now. Yeah. And all the time I'm singing a song, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. And I, and I don't waste a whole lot of time between songs. What's it cost to come in here on a Saturday night? I don't know. <laughs> they never did charge me. What's it cost, I RJ? Think, What's it I cost it, to get I in the door? I believe it. Ten dollars. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Ten dollars. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Worth uh, every penny, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was two dollars when we first opened up. That's what it was. What's the perfect number of people in here? What's the when you're up here singing and you know they're out there? What's the perfect number? Three hundred, maybe. That's a lot of people, by the way. Two, two to three, maybe. Yeah. Two to three hundred. Yeah, but it's 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 never it seems to be never at all at the same time. You know, we might have a slower crowd to begin with and and it it pick up somewhere mid midnight middle of the night and then might drop off so everybody's not here all at the same time usually mm -hmm. but, but that's a good crowd what's what's the quiet thoughts about really what's important to you in life maybe what's what are those things that like, i'm not going to say that not, but there's a guy that just came out have you heard this new guy this oliver anthony guy have you heard yeah. that one richmond north of richmond oh yeah yeah there's no doubt when that guy wrote that he meant it. But he had no clue that everybody would, would go for it like that. I know he didn't. No he idea. No clue. He had no idea that people would, that would strike a nerve with everybody. everybody. Yeah. No. Do, um, do you write from that perspective, or is it what's entertaining no, you? No, I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think there's necessarily anything special about it. It just hit. It hit with almost what we're feeling right now or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And all of his songs have some kind of uh, charisma to them. Uh, uh, some, and he's he's really uh, 
a style of his own. There's no two ways about that. Yeah. And he gets a little risque with his with his with the lyric, approach with, with the lyrics. lyrics. Yeah. Chance of upsetting some people. He's got it going on. What's that? What is that music? Is there a little banjo happening in there? What what's going no, on? It, it's a he plays a resonator. It's like a dobro, but he plays it like a guitar. He don't lay it down and play it like a dobro. He plays it like a guitar. You would call that a resonator. Hmm. What he plays. Something about the whole thing just hits. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a it's got a, a sound of bluegrass in it. Hmm. Does that mix in with yours at all? Uh, I've recorded things that I've used dobro on. Yeah. Uh, but I don't don't lean on it. Uh, steel guitar and fiddle on all my recordings. We don't have a fiddle here in the band, but but uh, you know steel guitar on about everything I do, and uh, everything has a that steel guitar crying is 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 a country flavor, you know. Mm. When you pick up that instrument, is it just a nice old good six string guitar that? Yeah, a D twenty eight Martin. Yeah, there it is. That I play when at home and and when I play out somewhere. But I I play a, a an electric guitar here. It's, I have it plugged in. And is that it right up there, the it, red one? Yeah, that's that's an applause. And it's a uh, it's electric guitar. Plug plug it in, and it's durable and. Uh, I just play it here all the time. It's got leave, some years on it. And leave it here. Yeah, I've had it several years, and just leave it here. That's it. And I come in and pick it up, and it's in tune. The guitar player, my guitar player always tunes it. Boy, that's nice, isn't it? Before I get here, yeah. That's the wife of running a business. Absolutely. They see you coming, and it's done. I pick it up, and if it ain't in tune, it's his fault. Why do you think uh, Why do you think you have those people around you that are willing to support you and take care of you and help you? Why do you think that is? I'm just blessed. You know, I really am. It's it's not required of them, you know. I could take a stab at it. I just didn't know if you'd be. You're a humble guy. Yeah, I I, I am, and and I don't, uh, you know, I I, I don't I don't want to be their boss mm. or anything. You know, we just all play music and have a good time. That's the way I look at it. But your name's on the sign. I know, but I don't I don't like to flaunt that. We're we're all just making music together that we love, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a little stab at it here. I bet if they were sitting here and you walked out and it's like, all right, guys, let's, what do you think about Bobby? It'd be a lot of good stuff, man. I hope so. And, you know, but probably they got to know my dedication. That's, you know, always, I, I don't come in here dreading to get up on stage and, you know, they, they don't either. You know, I do an hour and a half when we, when we come in here, I, I could do more. I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not looking for break time to get there. Mm -hmm. Do you go long sometimes? Sometimes. Not too much, but... I've been known to do that in a meeting or two, I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. like, here we go, here he goes again. If you got one more thing you want to say? Oh, there's usually two or three, Bobby. There's <laughs> usually two or three. <laughs> if I do that, it's... If I got something extra I want to say, it comes in a song. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You're not really talking too much other than through the music and the song. Maybe the crowd, you know, really into it and, you know, maybe dancing a little bit and might... Kick some dust a little bit there before we break, you know. Do you have the spurs on the boots? No. In, fa in fact, I about traded my boots in. It's a whole lot comfortable to wear flats. There you go. <laughs> these days. You can get away with it now. Now it's like, I don't care what they think. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, I wear what, what I'm comfortable in. I traded uh, the cowboy boots for, for comfort. So what's special about this Fort Worth, West Texas thing? There's a lot of inspiration for you coming out of that. Yeah, and, and I always, always had a – a feeling I'd like to play in Texas, and uh, and I've gotten uh, a chance to do that, and uh, winning some awards out there at, at some of the award shows, and uh, uh, Little Red's Longhorn Saloon there in Fort Worth. I taped the Penny Gilly show out there back in uh, February, and it's uh, Penny Gilly's got this show on RFD TV, and I was on her show and did a couple songs and. Uh, and uh, she's on on RFD every week, and the episode that I that I taped has already aired. It'll air again this year, but uh, they have asked me to become a member of the show uh, on next year's tapings. They tape all their shows in two days in Fort Worth, and when I was out there, I was a guest on one of the shows and did two songs. But next year, I'll I'll be I'll be doing a song on every song they they tape for next year's season. So West Texas is like your beach. Uh, yeah, kind of. Well, you know, right? it's just, it's just uh, that's where the fiddles come out. Mm. 
the twin fiddles come out in Texas. I'm probably going to go out there and play at Little Red's Longhorn Saloon sometime. We talked about it when I was out there, the, the owner. And I was uh, planning to uh, take a weekend, get somebody to play for us here, and and, and uh, we want to go out there and, and play in that Texas dance hall. You're going to drive the Thunderbird there? No, no, no. Probably <laughs> find a bus to take us all out there. Will so, you? Yeah. That's fun. Have you have you hit the road on a bus before? Have you done that? I have done, I've done some of that. Before I started in nightclubs full time, I, I worked with Steve Lake's band up around Middletown. Steve Lake had a band, and, and uh, he was the band that Connie Smith used whenever she was within 500 miles of Cincinnati. Well, I was the front singer in Steve's band and opened a lot of the shows for Connie Smith during that time. I imagine being on one of those buses, it'd be a heck of an experience. Uh, I always managed to get a song on my mind and pass the time away. Yeah. Going going down the road. Mm-hmm. So Wilder, Kentucky. Yeah. It's where we're at. This is it's special to you because it comes out in some of your songs. Yeah. It's home. There you go. And and I know that uh that the people here are gonna go for my music and understand it and be a part of it. Support you and love you. And they become a part of it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Two thousand twenty three, so you're writing some of the better music you've ever written. Yeah, and just and recording. If I don't write them myself, I find some of the better songs from some great writers. I, I know some great writers, and and they send me their songs, and I've been getting some great songs from other writers. It must feel good. Yeah, it does, and and I know what fits me, and I, I can know in a minute whether it's a song I want to do or not. Do you read it or you play it? Do you sit there and do you, do you read it and know it, or do you have to you have to pick up your guitar? When I listen to the demo, yeah, the melody and and the way it got, the, what the song is saying, I can listen to them singing it with the demo that they send me, and I can tell pretty much right then. But then I'll pick up my guitar and you know start learning it and going through it, and and it don't take me long to figure out if if it's a song for me or not. If we were sitting out here and we had a talent show, I'm assuming you've had some. Uh, yes, we have back in the day, not. Uh, not too much anymore. What would make us sitting out here with you know what you and having your ear and when you know something's good, what would make you say there they are? That's a hard one. I, I can tell when somebody can sing and 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 if they're singing a good song. Mm-hmm. You can see it, talent though. Is what I'm saying? Like if you, the song and the feeling is there and and they're and they're selling me the song, I have to feel something from it. So that's what it is. It's a feeling. It might yeah. not even be a certain note. It might not be. A, you feel it. Music is a feeling. That's all, all you can say. That's it. When I was listening to your stuff, when I said, man, he's good, he's talented, it felt it felt good. And so that's what this music is. It's like making people feel something. Yeah. It's a connection with, with me on stage and the people out here. I feel the connection. If they're sitting there and not dancing and they're sitting there looking at the stage, they're, they're here for the music. If they want to dance, they can dance, but they're not doing that. They're listening to the music. I mean... That tells me something. And if you find yourself doing the same thing, you're like, that person's got something. Yeah. It's yeah. A feeling. If I'm captured. So what would happen if I walked over in a corner and got captured by a bull, a mechanical bull? What happens about that? Because we said back in the day, you jumped on that thing for about three seconds. Yeah. Uh, and you're about to ride it all night long. I didn't do it on my own, though. <laughs> 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 well, the bull's been another, another thing. You know, that come along during the urban cowboy. I heard about the movie being made out at Gillies out in Pasadena, Texas. And uh, I heard about about that happening, and the movie was being made at the time. And I heard about the that uh, John Travolta riding this mechanical bull in the movie, and I, I thought, I wonder what that looks like, you know, mechanical bull? I had lunch with uh, the general manager that, that had just gone country with WSAI radio when it just went country. And uh, the uh, the general the new general manager of the station was a friend of mine because he was a sales manager at WUBE, and he wanted to have lunch one day and, and talk about some promotions we could do together with the radio station. And we had we went to lunch, and uh, th- there with him sitting there by him was a, a a new sales rep for the station, and he introduced me to him and said, "This is your new sales rep. You guys can get together." And, work out promotions and stuff. Okay, that sounds good. And we, we talked, but but he didn't say a word the whole the whole thing. The whole time he just listened to me and 
and the general manager talk. And uh, I said a lot of things about the bull, and uh, that sounds like it'd be a good promotion. I don't know, you know, if it, it, it's going to be a movie anyway. So we broke up from the lunch, and I went home a couple hours later. R.J. Seifert called me and said, I, I got all the information about this bull, how long it takes to get it, and how much it costs, and the whole rundown. And I said, well, I... Uh, I'd have to see it first. I don't know. I can't. I can't order order it without knowing how it works and whether, you know, Texas is rodeo oriented. And I didn't know if these boys from Kentucky would be riding a bull like that or not. So, well, let's go see it. So me and R.J. hopped a plane, flew to Houston, and and the owner at Gillies, the manager there, had what we did. We got off the plane. We didn't take any luggage. We we flew out. A guy from Gillies with a Gillies T-shirt on met us at the uh, baggage claim, and he rode us to Gillies, and we stayed there all night watching people ride the bull, and the girls rode it as much as the boys did. And I said, I think this is something that will work, so I ordered one that night. That night? Yeah. Wow. They took me and RJ back to the airport, and we laid around there in that Houston airport. We laid around there for about three hours before we got a plane coming back. Isn't that funny about promotions? Because all this is built for you to sit up here and sing and yeah. play, right? Yeah. And But yet, whether it's the... Well, we had a place back here that the bull fit perfect. Yeah. Because it was back all set back here. And where the bull sets now is where the craps table set during the gambling days years ago. Very same place. Mm. But it was almost fit for the bull. Yeah. It was made for it. And during the Urban Cowboy, lots of clubs around got a mechanical bull but they'd have to use part of their dance floor or, but it's like it was built for and, it and when the when the bull got when it started wearing off they got rid of it mm. i just leave that set there yep. you know so like I, nobody was using it, it is it what it is the way, you know? wow i mean it's been a big hit oh absolutely and then of course you know when i met rj he was my sales rep at wsai and then after we got the bull and everything everything got urban cowboy crazy he came to work for me so doing some promotions yeah so. and if it's those people you got to know who to listen to in life don't you yeah because you got on that plane yeah well, well i followed my followed my instincts right i, I got to see it first i'm not going to order and have it come in here and, and not know what it's like yeah but we stayed out there all night and watched people ride it and i got up on it i said don't turn this thing on i got up there and sat on it and deborah winger came in they were finishing up some some filming in the parking lot at the, at that time the one of the late scenes in the parking lot uh, near the end of the urban cowboy movie mm -hmm. when the fight was going on yeah. all that when when they shut that down deborah came in and then rode the mechanical bull like she rode it in the movie that little exotic dance thing she did on yeah. the mechanical bull she did that live in in, in gillies that night if it's uh, sometimes I imagine if you need a little laugh, I'm sure you can just step off stage for a little break and just watch some of the stuff going down. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so many people that come in, the younger people come in and hadn't never seen one before, you know, and they jump right on it and they're going to try to conquer that bull, you know, <laughs> it's kind of tough to do, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. It is. And then all of a sudden they hear you playing here off to the side. They're going to have to drag you off the stage, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. These guys, it's impressive, man. I think is. I'm excited to see the passion that you have around this. I'm excited to see and hear the music that's going to come out of this in 23 and 24. And you're going to Fort Worth. You're playing stuff with your daughter. You got the hit song. I, one of the things I recorded now that we're going to finish up, do some work on next week, uh, this got this writer, the great writer out of uh, Pigeon Forge, sent me this song, and, and it just blew me away when I heard it. And I – and I knew it was a song for me, but I had a little apprehension about it. I didn't know if I could sing it as well as his demo, you know. But I got a great cut on it, and it's probably going to be, could be song of my career. It's called Someday I Won't Wake Up Loving You. It's, it's a typical he stopped loving her today. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Someday I Won't Wake Up Loving You. People like them will say it songs. <laughs> <laughs> Does something to us. Are we scared about it or we're like, well, damn it, I'll go ahead and just see it, I, I, I guess. I, I don't I don't know. But, yeah. But th those are the ones that's made the best hits throughout country music history. So what'd you wait so long to get your best song for? Well, 
I recorded it as soon as I could after he sent it to me. <laughs> I had my ears open for that, and and I'm I'm just blown away with the song. When's it's it gonna come out? Uh, I I don't know. I I got this song out now that's just now getting on the charts. Uh, so uh, you have to pace the releases, huh? So, so you make us wait. So you tease us. You talk about it. You well, make us I, wait. I'm anxious to get it out, but I don't want to put it out in the way of something that's already out there mm -hmm. and get play. I don't want to put something out that'll take the place of it, or they might quit playing it and start playing the other one. That's the know? business behind it. I want to let it run its course and then release a new one. And so, I, you know, I might release it next. I'm going to push for it anyway. When you said you didn't know if you could sing it as well as the demo, what was it about the song? It was a little bit of a low gear. It had some low notes in it. And there's not much Excel in it. It's 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 in a a low tone mm -hmm. and I didn't know if I could hit that. Hit that, but I did. When you recorded it too, did you know when you were recording it or did you listen to it after? I knew when I was recording that it, it was working. How many times you listened to it afterwards? After we got it down? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of times because we had to move on to another song. Mm -hmm. You're like, I want to keep playing this one. <laughs> yeah. I, well, as soon as I was able to get a copy of the vocal on it, I listened to it a lot because it, it, it moves me, I'll tell you that. So see, even something that you're singing moves you. That that song moves me. It's you know, It's got it all. Had anybody else recorded it to make it big yet? No. Th this guy wrote it himself. And, and How'd you get it? I recorded his song, Let Me Drink About It. Awesome. And uh, I sent him a message. I was looking for some songs to go in the studio. I said, I'm looking for some more songs. You got anything? And that's the first one he sent me. When you go into the studio, you still go to the one in Taylor Mill or no? Is that one still no, here? Dennis sold that. Okay. He sold that. And uh, we, we've we used a couple other studios in town. We just go in and put down the rhythm tracks. Okay. And I do the vocals. And uh, then we overdub all the all the the steel and fiddle and guitar and all that. Does it still piano. feel the same when you record that now as it did 20, 30, 40 years ago? No, I, th I feel like I was trying too hard. Yeah. I don't have to try as hard now. I don't want to overdo it. You know, you can over sing a song. Hmm. Huh. And you did that for a while, I guess. That I, I was over singing. Yeah. A lot of my early stuff that I listen to, I can tell it. Maybe we overdo life a little bit too, huh? Well, at times. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been doing this 45 years. We got your plaque and some senator or something gave you something here. What, yes. what is this about? It's, it's uh, recognizing 45 years. 45 years. Yeah. In Kentucky. What do you think? So look on those. Do you ever reflect on these 45 years? Do you reflect on it? Yeah. And all the, the fads that has come along, like the mechanical bull, and of course, it never did go away. It's, uh, but there have been certain fads that have come along and, there were times when, when when country music started not being so country, and it just didn't what the main radio country radio in town was. The music they were playing was not the music I was doing. Alabama wasn't country, and you know, to my opinion, they did a whole lot to ruin country music. Mm -hmm. But they were big and popular and big stars. Alabama had some big records, but I I never did sing one of their songs. Doesn't fit. What about it? And I don't think it's talking bad about it. It's just it's it's what you really feel. What about it? To edge, what? How did it hurt country music? It wasn't country, and just because the popularity of it, it it took over everything. And then and then it put it started a fad of groups that other groups sprang up. Alabama and there were you know lots of other names that instead of it being a, just an old country boy like George Jones singing a country song. It was groupish, and they they all sung harmony all the time, and to me it just it just wasn't country, and, and I never did sing one of their group songs. Can you can, can there be harmonies in old traditional country? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. good ones. Har harmonies make it, but but it's not on the whole thing. It's not on everything. It's on certain lines, mm -hmm. on the chorus maybe, but it accents the song, and 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 puts more feeling in it. When groups are singing, they sing for the harmony of it, but you don't feel nothing. I brought up a song earlier. I don't know if you liked it or not, but that Willie and Merle sang together. Poncho and Lefty. Is that a good country song? Not quite. Okay, because that's quite. I, I, not, I knew you were going to say that's what I'm asking. It's, it's a good song. I never did sing it. Okay. Uh, I, I never felt the song, but it's a good story. Yeah. 
and uh, it was one of, one of their biggest records. But it's not a great country song. No, but 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 you couldn't you wouldn't you wasn't going to lose them mm -hmm. from country music. Yeah, that song was big hit. Yeah, wasn't quite as country, but the next Merle Haggard record was going to be, and the next. Yeah. Willie, Nel Willie Nelson's still putting out good records. Yeah. So you still let him off the hook for that song a little bit. You let, him off, you let him off the hook a little bit for that song. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, but it, it, it's not a song I ever wanted to sing. Who sang the song? I should know this. But they said, I wrote him back and said that wasn't a good country western that song. That was uh, David Allen Coe. Huh? What about that song? David Allen Coe. Did he yeah. make it a good country western song? Yeah, yeah. I was drunk the day my mom got out of prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Well, I never did sing it either. You didn't? No. Well, if it was but, a good country western song, come yeah, on, Bobby. It was. It was a little, little more rowdy than I wanted to get. Well, all those rowdy friends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All my rowdy friends have settled down. You know, I like the uh, the country ballads and the love songs and songs that have good meaning, not not a real rowdy mm -hmm. type meaning. I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's certain songs I just never would sing. So bring your lady to a night at Bobby Mackey's, and come out on the dance floor and dance to a nice country ballad song. Love song. There it is. A good love song. Yeah, I might even do He Stopped Loving Her Today. How often does that come out? Uh, uh, I, I get lots of requests for it. So I'll do it, you know, not every weekend, but every other weekend maybe. Mm -hmm. But I, I do it a lot when people ask for it. Or, or if somebody says, do some George Jones. That's, that's the first one I'm going to go do. to. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens when somebody shouts that song, but you ain't going to play it? You mean that particular song? No, just in general. You're like, I ain't playing that song tonight. But you're too nice to tell them that. You just move on. No, what I happens? Try, I, try to, I try to accommodate. You do? Yeah. Uh, I might delay it if it's not what I'm into at that moment. Yeah. If I'm not feeling that style song, I'll say, I'll do it for you after a while. And, and I always do if I don't. Forget it, you know. But <laughs> See, forget it. There I, it is. Well, <laughs> I, I always hope I don't because I always mean well. Yeah. There's, there's a little mean streak in there once in a while. Come on, you're so nice. No, no, Nothing, no, not no. one? I, I, I always like to it, do – if somebody wants to hear a song, I want to do it. For now, them. it sounds like off off screen here, now there's a little – maybe somebody knows something about some meanness or something. No? I see here something happening from over here. It's over here. <laughs> no. So hey, he's only the best promotion man on the planet. That's it, right? Yeah, okay. So what about the man in black? Johnny Cash? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I've, I love Johnny for for years. A lot of his songs. I, I don't do many of them because his style is. What is that style? His own. So that's what matters. No question about it. Folsom Prison Blues. Who don't like that? Yeah. I mean, who don't like that? Yeah. If somebody yells, "This is Johnny Cash," dun, 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 dun. <laughs> get it, it, it'll get them every and it time. It fires them up. It'll get them every time. Hmm. It's how it made us feel. It'll fill the it'll fill the dance floor. Yeah, you have a good voice, but I don't think somebody has to have a good voice all the time to be a good singer. Is that true or no? What is well, that? A, is that a bad I, well, statement? Pr pretty mu pretty much, but uh, have the feeling for it is 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 equally important. Know what to do far, with it, as far as I'm concerned. Know, to, know how to express the feeling that's in the song. Yeah. And make people feel what you're singing. Yeah. Because there's some people, I'm not going to insult them, but some of these big, big stars, and I'm like, they don't have a great voice. But the songs they sing, they make these connections. They make you feel it. It's like, man, there's something happening up there. Well, I've worked, I've worked on my voice for years, trying to, trying to perfect it and, and get – the tone that I wanted, and, and I worked on the muscles, you know, and the vocal cords, and to get it. And right now, I can tell you, I've got my voice the way I've always wanted it. Wow! How much? What'd you have to do to make that happen? I mean, it sounds like just big. just, just uh, exercise by singing on stage every night. That's what made it what it is today. Wow! You hear the little small tweaks. You hear the smallest things. Yeah, phrasings and feelings, and sooner or later, it becomes natural. Yeah, you hear things that maybe others don't. Yeah, I hear th things that I want to do. Yeah, and and you may not know it until you hear it, but but I am better than I've ever been. That's good. Toby sings about that. Yeah, that's in that song. If it's yeah. right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm as good once as I've ever been. Yeah. So you feel that way every Saturday night, y'all? It's Friday and Saturday night, no matter how you look at it, and and people are here and to have a good time and and. and Guess what? Me and the band are going to have a good time, too. That's it. So I drive by here a lot of nights 
And a lot of those nights, and I see these parking lots just full. Yeah. And I've always thought, man, that must be a good time in there. So now it always is. he's going to make me come out here and come out. And I'm a terrible dancer. And you I, and you, I, you got the whole story now. It's bad. I'm you a wanna, bad dancer. You want to come out and get the rest of the story. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do, right? Yeah, and now for the rest of the story. <laughs> so that I'll get laughed at, but I come out here on stage and dance to a good love song. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. And uh, what, 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 we'll do it. What's the best love song? We'll wrap it up on this. What's the best love song that you're the best at that when I come out here – and I'm like, can we can we get? I always I always say when when I do, uh, he stopped loving her today. Mm -hmm. I always say that it's the the greatest country song of all time. A lot of times behind that, I'll say, but this is the greatest love song of all time. It's, Have I told you lately that I love you? Mm. It's an old country song. Mm -hmm. you, are you do you remember yep, the song? Hundred percent. A lot of times I'll do that. I'll do them back to back. One of them is the greatest country song ever, and the other is the greatest love song ever. Yeah. Well, one more question about what about a um, like a Keith Whitley back in the day? That guy did he not? Keith, Keith was here. Yeah, he was. Yeah, six months before he died. Man, that was he some was talent. That seemed like some talent. He was here in uh, November of '88 and died in May of '89. And he had when he was here that uh, "Don't Close Your Eyes" had, had was just a hit. Big at song. the time he was here. Yeah. So you have some good music. You wouldn't let anybody come here that you didn't think they were good, would you? Let me say it this way. I wouldn't if they weren't country. Okay. Yeah. So they got to be country. Yeah. I, be no use to me book people in here going to sing stuff that the people ain't here to hear. Going to sing some they're pop here, or something. They're here to hear me sing country music. Yeah. George Jones and Merle Haggard. And Vern Gosden was here. Vern Gosden was great. What do we have to do to bring one or two of these people back in these oh, days that's still around? What we got to do? It don't hardly work anymore. Well, I mean, we got to find somebody. They're too expensive. Is that what it is? They've outgrown this. Yeah. So you can't get enough people in here. Yeah, and you have to charge so much per person. You can't do that. Yeah. You know? Would it be you have to charge one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars? That'd I be don't crazy. Know. I, you know, Gene Watson is one of the better ones still today. That's that. Uh, you know, all the all the old, old old heroes are about all gone except Willie Nelson. But Gene Watson is is a great one still today doing country music. So I, you know, I'd look at having him. Uh, Dwight Yoakam still does. Boy, you know. I don't go to many concerts, but I just went to Dwight, went out to River Bend and listened to him. I heard he was in town. Yeah. I mean, again, all I do is I just I work too much. But she drug me out to a concert because we were sitting we were sitting down here at um, Barley Corns, the new bar down here. Yeah. And they had who was going to be at River Bend, and I looked over there and went Dwight Yoakam. Man, I love that music. And she went and bought tickets, and we went out there. And that guy's voice, something about him. Oh, yeah. Style. Just special. He come through town here once before anybody ever heard his name. I had a live radio show on WUBE. It was Friday Night Live. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was living around Columbus at the time, and he was on his way to Nashville. And coming through town, caught us live on the radio about this honky-tonk, this nightclub. We're live from here. He come over here. And, and introduced himself. I'd never heard of him. I couldn't even pronounce his name. But I got him up to sing. Did you know when you heard him, you're like, there's something there? No. You I, didn't? He, I, he was coming through town and had to come over here, and I, I put him on stage and let him sing a song. But when you heard him sing, though, did you say, oh, that's well, good? It, uh, you didn't? It didn't? No. They, uh, he, he wasn't he near wasn't. what he became. Yeah. He was somebody singing somebody else's songs. Yeah. He became Dwight Yoakam singing his own. Boy, doesn't it just take practice? Yeah, yeah, and and dedication and commitment and all the things and, wor and work on it. Work the voice and yep. work your style. That little dance he's got with the swivel of them knees and all that yeah. stuff. But when he first started recording, he didn't know what his style was going to turn out to be. What you think of him now, you wouldn't have recognized him then at all. Mm -mm. Was that the nineties he came through, or would that have been eighties? Uh, it was in uh, probably mid eighty. Okay. See, I'd think that there'd be a star or two out here, Mr. Promotions, off camera. I think there'd be a star or two that put the money aside sometimes they'd want to come to a place like this. I'd think, I'd think some of these new guys yep. like this Oliver Anthony guy, I think some of those guys, if they're about what they say they're about, mm -hmm. they'd want to come here even if it were only 300 people. I think they'd uh, yeah, want to. Yeah, I think you're right. Right? Yeah. 
So what we got to do, I want to come and see Bobby, and I want to see one of these other dudes too. I'll tell you another one that uh, that uh, always draws a crowd and, and, and puts on a good show is uh, Marty Stewart. Yeah. He's still out here singing. Yeah. Well, what, where's Marty? They're just a little bit more than uh, – than the ticket price would allow. I understand. But I think when they'd come to town, I don't know. I don't understand the promotional piece like you guys. But if I was a guy who had enough money and I was still doing it because I loved it, I'd want to come sing here. Yeah. I just would. I'd yeah. want to come here for 60 minutes at least. I've had people that, that see in, in, the, in the fall, sometime in October, we usually start having early bands. Mm -hmm. We'll book some local bands in here and they'll, they'll, play an early show like from 7 30 to to nine mm -hmm. and uh we we've had we've had groups that come here that that love playing here they tell me getting to play here is like playing the grand old opera yeah, it should be that it feels like that when i came That's in what they and i said it's like a temple to country music yeah they, they should want to come here it makes me feel awful good to hear them say that yeah and so i don't think you got to pay anybody to go sing at the grand old opera i'm pretty sure uh union scales probably 50 bucks. I don't you know what I'm saying, know. though? Come on now. Hey, RJ, <laughs> let's get them rolling in here. Let's get them on this stage and let's hear some people now um, and get them dancing because I want Bobby to feel the way you feel again that you felt when George came on stage. Give it to yeah. him once more. Yeah. Uh, they get too much money. We got to find him. Come on, greedy y'all. Let's go. We got to get an Oliver Anthony and all these people up here. Did you hear that guy just canceled that show because they were charging too much? Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he said he, they were charging like ninety bucks. Ninety bucks. Yep. And he said, "No, I, you, you can't charge that." Much. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. There's something about that. I'm going to come in here on a Friday or Saturday All night, right. and when you see that guy who shouldn't be out on the floor dancing, at least just sing a love song and just help everybody get through it, and they see the bad dancing. We'll would look you? forward to it. <laughs> Thank you what, very much. Yeah. What times it start on Fridays and Saturday nights? I, I go on stage at nine thirty. The band I go on stage nine thirty and play at eleven. Nine thirty to eleven. Mm -hmm. Every Friday, every Saturday. Yep. Do you get a vacation? I don't remember. I don't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. I got so many people coming here expecting me to be here. Boy, that's a commitment. And, and when I, if I go somewhere and, and have to be gone, I'm well. If, if I'm sick or something, which it don't happen very often, but only that, or if I got a show to have to play somewhere or something that it's important, I like. Uh, well, last year we did Tennessee State Fair, mm -hmm. and I had to be gone on the weekend. I get somebody to sing for me and and, and carry on. But uh, when you know, go to Fort Worth, will you work that around Sunday to Thursday, or will you miss this for Fort Worth? I'll I'll miss this uh, to play it. Uh, if I play at Fort Worth, I want to play on Saturday night, boy, because that's that's when it's all happening. There's the smile. <laughs> there it is. That feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to look out there. I can see it now. Yeah, right. So you're yeah. going to Houston to get that award. Congrats on that for you. Thank you, you. You and your daughter going down there for that? Yeah, we're we're going, uh, but we're going down on a, on a Monday and coming back on Thursday. There you go. Okay, that it's a Wednesday night when we do get the award. Yeah. What do you think that means to you? That'd be the last thing we told. What's well, that mean to you getting that award? It's it, it, it's it's great. You know, I mean, uh, to, to be recognized like that. Uh, I got I got an award last year with Claude Gray, uh, uh, one of the old standard uh, country singers. Claude Gray he had a bunch of hits. He just passed away. He was ninety years old. And I recorded a song with him. We recorded the old Hank Williams song, uh, Cold, Cold Heart. Mm. We had a good record on it, and it went, went way up in the independent charts for us. But they gave us an award out at the same place, a CMA of Texas. Last year it was in Lubbock where they had it, and uh, Claude and I got an award last year for for Country Song of the Year. That's big. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's something that I, I would have – could never imagine happening, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> Something I could never imagine happen, happening, but it, it's been happening a lot, and it's 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 great and everything, but, you know, the next weekend I'm going to be here singing anyway, you know. So. <laughs> Kudos to you for doing this for all these years in our community. I just, um, when you drive by places like this and you just know that, they're the foundations of these communities that we build, and it's so important to you for Wilder, Kentucky. But people have been driving by here, like, kudos for the commitment still to this day because you're giving back that somebody can come in here for 10 bucks and sit down here and have a good time and experience it. So 
thanks for still giving back to the community. Yeah, so thank you, and 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 thanks for coming over and talking to me. No, this is awesome. They put our bright <laughs> lights on us, but they, it's not going to look like that when it's done. Yeah, I thought there's a train to come. <laughs> That's a song, too. That's a song, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, we, we appreciate you, man. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Okay, awesome. 